All right, in this video, we're gonna cover the job settings tab in the job manager, and that is the fourth tab on the right side of the screen here. So in the job manager, you have a materials settings tab. These are all of the epilogue provided material settings that were provided when the software was installed. Uh, and that's for the individual materials. What the job settings tab does, and it's blank because these are for special settings for your particular application and job, the material settings, if I open one of these up, you'll see that it has basically one process available. You have speed, power, DPI on one process. Where the job settings comes into play is if you have more than one process. For example, if we want to engrave and cut into wood, then we would have two processes to look at. So let's open up our CorelDRAW software. And so with the software open, I have a red hairline around our image in CorelDRAW and then the black engraving. So the black will be engraved and the red line will be the cut line or the vector in the epilogue software. And because it's a hairline, that is what will signify to the software that it's going to be a vector. If that, it doesn't matter what color it is, if that line was thicker, then it would show up as an engraved line. But since it's a hairline, it will show up as a vector. All right, so what we're going to do is click on print. And this is how I like to create my job settings. That You can go directly to the job settings tab and make new ones, but this is the way I like to do it to get started. That way it's, it's on something that I know I've done before. So I'm going to click on print. Then that's going to send this job to the job manager. So as that job shows up, we're not going to run this. This is We're using this time to strictly show how to save the job settings and what the benefits are. So if we're going to set this up correctly, then we're going to spend some time importing the materials list. Uh, so we're going to go down to deep engrave into wood. So we're just going to use those. And then the vector list will use three millimeter wood. So the materials list, again, is for an individual process. Well, I have more than one process for this particular job. So this is going to be a raster engrave and a vector cut. So instead of choosing those individually, you can actually come in and create or export a job setting. Call it a job setting. So we don't have the folders created yet, but we'll go to our name and just give it, uh, this is 3 millimeter alder wood. So it's specific to the material, but it also we're going to put combo on the end of that and to us that means engrave and cut engrave and vector so when I choose save and then we'll go ahead and send this to the job manager now what you'll find is that will be in our list so we'll go to the job manager and when that is open we'll see that job setting in our list so that's a way that you can create custom job settings that have more than one process. So if you have to engrave and cut, or you have multiple colored lines that have different speeds and powers attached to those, creating a job setting is a very easy way to go. Take some work up front, but once you do it, it'll save you a lot of time on the back end, just like these material settings do. So the material settings, again, are just for one process at a time. Job settings are for multiple processes at a time. Now another reason you might want to use job settings is if your job that you're engraving has some specialty settings. So let me demonstrate. I'll go open CorelDRAW again. And let's say that we want to engrave on a tumbler. In many cases that uh, we'll have artwork on a tumbler that is going to be engraved in the center of a tumbler or glass bottle mug. And there are different ways to handle this type of project, but I like to use the center center method. And so that is actually an a setting in the advanced tab uh, of the job settings or something that can be saved as a job setting. So instead of me doing this every time, I'm going to go to this Tumblr job and we'll explain how to set this up. So in a 4x4 area, which would cover most of the average engraving areas of a Tumblr, bottle, glass, uh, powder coated Tumblr. So we're going to click on print just like we did the other job and print that to the dashboard. We're not going to send this to the laser. This is just going to simply allow us to get that over to the dashboard and to create our job setting. So we'll say print. And so the settings that I use to run the tumblers 
or glass is I go to the advanced tab. We'll kind of ignore the screen here. We'll go to advanced and we'll change none to center center and we'll turn the rotary attachment on four by four. That all looks good. Then we'll say preview. So that is in the perfect position in the center of where I would want that to go. So I would use the red dot pointer on the laser machine and I have a video that I'll link in the description that steps through how to set that up on the machine. But this is where you would set the uh, temporary point of origin or home position. And so now we're going to, instead of going to our material list, because we probably don't have one for powder coat, we have one for glass, uh, but those aren't still uh, center center or anything like that. So we're going to go ahead and set this up to 50 speed, 100 power, and maybe we'll use 400 DPI. And so these are the settings we'll use for a powder coated tumbler. But in order to encapsulate the process and the center center over here, we are going to now create a job setting. So we'll come down to our folder and say export that as a job setting. And we'll call this um, tumbler, or I like to be more generic, any kind of drinkware. And we'll say drinkware, uh, maybe powder coated. And I like to put center, center on the end of it. And so we'll save that. And then I'm going to send that to the job manager. And so now in our job settings tab, we should now have two. Yes, we do. We have two job settings available. So I would recommend that you spend as much time as you can uh, forecasting what specialty jobs, what jobs have more than one process, and get those saved in the job settings tab. One more thing we'd like to cover is setting a default. So if you see that maybe for the next few months you're going to, for Christmas gifts, you might be engraving tons of drinkware and that's all the machine's gonna be used for for a while, you might wanna set one of these as default. Um, or maybe the other way, maybe you're doing Christmas ornaments. So you're gonna do a lot of cutting and engraving of the same thickness and style of wood for a long time. So you might wanna set a default speed and power setting or job setting for the whole job manager. So the way to do that is in the job settings tab, you'll go to the select this one that would be highlighted blue. And once that's highlighted blue, you'll come up here and choose the set as default. So setting that as default puts a check mark right here. Now that will be default setting used when the dashboard is open and when a job is sent. Let's demonstrate. So we'll go back to Corel Draw and let's find a different artwork here. So yeah, our Aztec calendar. So this is going to be engraved and cut. So now we're going to say print, and you'll notice this time we don't have to go to material, speed, and power. We won't have to go to export uh, the right settings for three millimeter wood that we're going to be engraving on. So once we print this job over here, that dashboard will already have our settings that we set as that we chose from default from the job settings tab. So with that open, we come over to our process and we can see right away uh, that the job will have all ready to go, the deep engraving setting and the vector cutting setting. So that's because we set that as default. We didn't have to come up to material settings. We didn't have to import anything. So um, that, was, that can save so much time if you'll do the work on creating those defaults when you need them. So if I go ahead and send that to the job manager, then that will send that job to the jobs list as well. And so we'll come over to jobs and those are the jobs that we have in queue. One last thing that these items and much, much more are available to review on in your Epilogue Laser Owner's Manual. So I want to take just a moment to remind everyone that we do have, gosh, a very well-written, well-organized um, set of explanations and details and things that you can refer to, material settings, uh, techniques that you don't find in just that job manager. And so if you go up to support and service, you can go down to laser machine manuals and you can open the PDF for each of the models from, gosh, way back when. And so if you've lost yours or can't find it or you're an operator at a different location, open this up and let's say you want to look and see what job settings is defined as or how to use it. So you can push control F on your keyboard and that is the find in Windows, pretty much anything. So now we'll type in job settings and it has found 22 items. We'll say next. 
Uh, so there's the second one. So you can see it's going to highlight and go through each of those. And it'll kind of define for us what the Job Settings tab is and explain how to use it. So I hope this has been helpful to you in learning um, in another video what the Material Settings tab was and now how you can really save a lot of time by using the Job Settings. Get your defaults ready to go and get all your job settings for your materials and your jobs ready to go. That's it for now. Thank you for watching.